walking up to the starting line and not stretching. You'd never see that, right? We don't do that. So we should be doing that. We should be doing stretches in our morning huddles. Why are we not doing that? It's so simple. One stretch, just do it. You don't have to spend a ton of money. You don't have to go to the gym and be a big buff bodybuilder girl to make it happen. You can do some basic things. And I would say that probably 70 to 80% of my clients aren't coming to me to lose weight. Um, they, they say, you know, if I can lose some weight too, that'd be cool. They're coming to me because they're in pain. It's, it's important for people to know that even someone who is a competitive bodybuilder and has a lot of confidence in what I'm doing, I too was terrified at one point. Like I was literally terrified to go in. So go in, ask some questions because that's what they're there for. Get ready for your unofficial dental hygiene podcast. These are the tales of two hygienists, one East Coast RDH and one West Coast guy genist. Listen as they tackle the profession of dental hygiene with humor and enthusiasm. Now, please join Michelle Strange and Andrew Johnston as they tell you a tale of two hygienists. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists, episode number 237. My name is Andrew. And this is Michelle. And this episode's coming out on Andrew's birthday week. Yay! Yeah, I was actually surprised that you remembered that. Um, I have had multiple birthdays in the calendar because you put a fake one on Facebook and it's thrown me off it's, multiple years. No, it's always... Okay. It's always been a real one on Facebook. I just lied to you when it, you say something about it. I'm like, no, it's not that. It's a lie. And then... Anyways, there it is. Just yeah. the fun things. That and, I, I, and then I can't, you know how I am with dates. I can't keep them straight. I know. So. That's why I'm just so, so impressed. Yay. Happy birthday to me. I am the big three, seven. Lies. What? Are you 37? I mean, I will be tomorrow, but when this airs, I will have already had my birthday, but yeah. I don't know why I thought I was not a full year older. <laughs> the, I tell you every single time you were so, I guess it's just because so I'm, older aging so much better than you i just forget <laughs> is that the thing that's what it is okay for sure mm, yeah well <laughs> and if anybody wants to know the whole skincare regimen y'all just let me know because there ain't a day that don't that does not go by i just actually yelled at you about your i know i was gonna say well i could give them also my advice which is don't ever put which on is sunscreen. just don't wear sunscreen and rub germex on your face every day it's not germex is hand sanitizer Doesn't matter. with emollients. As if that matters at all in the world, your poor skin on your face. Ugh. Anywho, welcome to this dental podcast. <laughs> with emollients. I'm just kidding. With emollients. Um, yeah, welcome everyone to a dental podcast that we're going to talk about some dentistry stuff. It's going to be good. Yeah, and this whole month has been on ergonomics and taking care of ourselves for a better, longer career. Don't take any advice from Andrew, only our guest. I mean, look, that's not, that's not bad. <laughs> I would say always listen to our guests and then I'm second. Always, always. Yeah. Yeah. Rarely listen to us. Always listen to our guests. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to pivot real quick and go non-dentistry for a minute. Can I say though, other than you handing me about like my skincare non-routine, I'm really enjoying the summer. Oh, good. It feels good to be back to work. It feels good to like oh, have yeah. a, like a like a uh, routine, which I'm not trying to rub it in your face, but like, cause we're open and, and all our stuff, but like, it feels good to have a routine. It feels good. Like the, the sun, fi I finished painting my fence. And if you remember oh, that do it, trying to do that for a while, March, March is when I started it. And so there hasn't been three consistent or consecutive days of sunshine. Things are going so well right now. I'm very happy. Well, we both are a fan of the warm weather as well. Mm -hmm. So summertime is amazing. I was on the beach today, so mm -hmm. Because I am trying very hard to only be outdoors when <laughs> around people. How, how, what's your perception about like offices being open right now? Now, because I mean, we've talked about this several times on the show, but because COVID's coming in waves and doing its things and PP, no PP, we've figured some things out. We haven't figured all things out. Where are you standing you know, nowadays? I'm standing at, it depends on where you are in your practice which is not what's happening. It's just like everyone open mm -hmm. all as well <laughs> in some places. And I, you know, I'm in South Carolina. We're a hotspot now. And I 
don't think everyone is wearing the proper stuff because they're having a hard time getting it. So I'm like, if you're, uh, there's just so much that we don't know. And the ambivalence towards this is, has been quite shocking, has been quite shocking. And it is, um, you know, this is a bold statement and yeah, I've never shied away from run, running my mouth about some things, but I have learned in dentistry, just because you graduate with a science degree does not mean you understand science. Amen. Absolutely. And I have, this has been very obvious, Mm -hmm. very obvious in the last few months. And yeah, I've definitely got some different opinions of practitioners in the world. How do you feel though about like the patient bases and like the, the feelings that they have of like, oh yeah, sure. I'll just go into the dentist for any old anything. Well, I, it's, I don't know if all of them, because I have quite a few people that have like reached out to me, like random friends that are like, is it okay to go? And I'm like, well, tell me all the things that your dentist is doing. And I've actually been very impressed with some of them. They've like sent me a PDF document from their dentist. And I was like, oh, you might be okay to go to yeah. <laughs> this one. And it was a child. And I'm like, it, you, it's probably like very low aerosolizing procedures and stuff. So yeah, go. But I don't know, some people, I'm just like, well, uh, mm. yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's been a lot of. I, we just need. Is I've just never been more on board with needing more regulation in dentistry. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I agree with that, though. I mean, I've been sitting on these, you know, almost boards like the exam uh, examining committee for Washington State and all these things for quite some time, and I've always been the one that's been like, no, we need actually more you know, checks and balances. We need more people in a position that's regulating actual dentistry, not just be like, yeah, I have a dental degree. I can, you know, make all the choices for everyone and feel good about that. And this whole professional, like, uh, what did, what does it say in there? Um, this help me. It's like, re- we'll rely on your professional guidance or your professional decision-making. What's the words? Professional judgment. Is that what it is? Is that what it says? Professional, I don't know. I have no idea what you're Maybe for. it is professional judgment. I just, I thought it was a different word, but they, I'm like, well, if we're relying on the ethics of some of these practice owners, God help us mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. May the odds be in our favor. But, you know, I'm finishing up my article. I talked about this on, I think, a few podcasts ago, but I talked about an article that I was working on and I was kind of titling it, There's Got to Be More than, to Hygiene Than This. Mm-hmm. And I've just never... <sighs> I just don't know why we're not more upset. Like I'm so super aware that we only matter in the world of dentistry for putting a scalar to the tooth. And that is disheartening. <laughs> and I mean, I've been saying it for a while. Like I've definitely been moving away from like scaling and I'm like, I'm looking at biofilm management and nutrition and sleep and myofunctional therapy and tongue position. Like those are kind of, that's where I've been moving for a while now. So I know maybe my perspective was a little different than the general population of dentistry and dental hygiene for that matter. But now I'm like, do y'all not see you are not valued until you put a scalar to a tooth? And does that not piss you off? Yeah. I mean, I think that there's, you know, you look at some of our friends that are like the generation of hygienists right ahead of us. And some of the amazing names and all of what they consider to be the hygiene profession and, you know, entry level hygiene is actually this high instead of this low. I think what has happened over time is when, and this is just Andrew's opinion, I could be very, very far off base. I never done any of the research for this, but like in the beginning, (laughs) it was like, okay, we need hygienists to do the hygiene portion of things. It wasn't about scaling necessarily. It was about teaching and getting people healthy. And so then when the money making thing really became front and like front and center of dentistry, when you're like, oh, not only can I just have a good life, I can be filthy rich as a dentist or dental professional. And now your value is on just money, 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 creating money, doing as right. much of that. Then it did end up being you can actually make a lot of money for your practice by scaling and scaling and root planning and doing just those couple of things. And then what had happened was within our profession itself. The people that are leaders now, that's what they grew up on was only scaling. And so that's all they put the emphasis on. And the people that are leading the schools, and that's all they're really putting emphasis on because that's what the job is out there in the real world. And so our profession has really gotten screwed over because of the money aspect of it. 
And so we need someone that's kind of like in your kind of mindset to really come back and be like, look, we're bigger and better than this. And then get the whole profession flipped back around. But that's a pipe. Well, definitely somebody with a, a mindset that it's even bigger than mine who has done the research. I'm just like, you know, I'm not, I'm not in a private practice. I'm only volunteering. Like, and I say only volunteering, but like, I don't have the control in my clinic, mm-hmm. right? Like I, I just can show up and do what I can do and kind of say, Hey, what about this? And that's, you know, where I end with <laughs> what I can do and the Im- impact and influence that I can have. But if I were there and able, like, I don't understand, I would, <laughs> I'm, you know, maybe I'm dreaming too, but I would definitely be pushing teledentistry, mm-hmm. oral hygiene instructions, oral cancer screenings, like all the other things that do not produce aerosols and really start showing the value of that and decreasing the disease and stop chasing our tail constantly, you know, scalar to tooth, drilled to tooth, disease must happen for us to make money. Like, I know I'm living, maybe it's a a pipe dream. I don't know, but I just feel like it should upset us way more (laughs) right now because we could have been making money. Like we could have been changing the perspective of what we do, which is just teeth maids, you know, or mouth maids, however you put it. Mm -hmm we are medical professionals and we have value. I don't know. I'm on a tangent right now. I had some trulies today, so I'll <laughs> take it down or not. <laughs> I'm glad we went down that rabbit hole. That's, that's good. I think that was a good discussion to have. Yeah. And I, you know, maybe we'll see something, maybe some insurances will change. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll see teledentistry stand. I know in South Carolina, my mom got a, a letter from her insurance company. I don't know who she's got insurance through, but it was like, now we're allowing teledentistry for anything. And I think it had like a 30 day expiration date. And I was like, mom, call them now. You say, I want teledentistry to stay or I will drop you. <laughs> she was like, oh, I can't. And my mom, Come on, Brenda. it will make a difference. I don't know. We have very different mindsets where I'm like, one person makes a change. Yeah. It matters. And she's like, oh, maybe one day. I'm like, do it. Make the change. She's like, no, I don't want to call them. I was like, well, we might do some fraud. I might have you call, give all your information, and then I'll demand. (laughs) There's teledentistry that stays with your insurance plan. But anywho, I'm glad that you're enjoying summer and I'm glad that you're enjoying getting back to work. How do you feel physically since we're talking ergonomics? Do you feel like your body got a good rest and you're like good to go? Yeah, I feel good to go. We talked a little bit about this a couple of podcasts ago. Since I do that hybrid stand up, sit down sometimes I don't feel like it's draining or too heavy like cords on because I still use the HVE for isolated polishing, isolated use of the um, ultrasonic. And I don't feel like it's really hurting me in any way, shape or form. I feel good. I feel good. How are you adjusting with the, uh, are you using KN95 or N95? We're doing KN95 still. We got, we have. Are you still good? Yeah. Um, we have our medical clearance forms kind of filled out as so we're going to get our fit test done. I think our office is end of this month. And then like, well, there's a whole, you know, rigmarole for all that, but we do KN95 and then the level three above it or on top of it, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, still good. No problems there. Nice. I failed my N95 fit test. I have yes, yet to find a small N95. <laughs> They're hard to find. Is like not easy. So it's a good thing I'm not back working. But so anywho, I think we'll all enjoy this episode that we have today with Katrina Klein. So we actually, we recorded this God, how, uh, back in January. Yeah, is that uh, right? Voices of Dentistry, I think, right? Yes. So we've been kind of holding on to this treasure uh, for a few months here because um, I knew that this series was coming and Katrina was there at Voices of Dentistry. So it was so fantastic that we could kind of sit down and chat about it. Um, She's got Facebook pages and all kinds of stuff that you should follow. She gives stretching exercises. And um, so reach out to her if you're having any pain, because if we don't take care of our body, who's gonna? Mm -hmm. We gotta. Mm -hmm. So enjoy this episode with Katrina Klein. Hey, Michelle. Yeah. It's time for the interview. Oh, but I had something else to say. We need to let the experts talk now. Fine. 
I'm really excited to uh, have this conversation because I am, I love the health side of just life. And you have really taken this and merged, mushed, meshed it all together with our profession yeah. really well. So introduce yourself, tell us what you do and how long you've been in this lovely little profession of ours. So I'm Katrina Klein. I'm the owner and founder of the Ergo <laughs> Fit Life. It's always weird to say that, I right? Know, Ergo Fit Life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been in dentistry for 22 years and I've been a hygienist for 13 of those years. What I do uh, is I have incorporated the angst of our profession, the pain that we all get, and um, found a way to, to prevent that, to treat it per se. Um, and that's by the use of ergonomics and fitness. Yeah. And so, you know, what we find, I think a lot of the times is that we get so focused on the business end of it and the patient end of it. And, you know, we get into this because we want to treat people and we want to help people with their dental disease and with their perio problems and all these things. And as the caretakers, we're the last people that we care about. Mm -hmm. And we all know that when we get to four o'clock and we realize we literally have not taken a, a, an ounce of water into our body. Well, <laughs> don't some of us purposely do that because we can't even find the time to go to the bathroom. Right. Yeah. And, and then you almost get into that, uh, that routine. So even when you're at home, you're not even getting that because you're not used to taking the water in. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're the last ones, especially, you know, a lot of times the parents, you know, because you get home and then you're also the last one yes. <laughs> because somebody needs you. And, <laughs> and I think that that pattern rolls over and stays with us at work and it becomes an expectation. Mm -hmm. And, and then you end up calling me saying, Katrina, I need 10 more years. Yeah. And that's probably my most frequent client is when I get that call and they're like, look, I'm having to cancel my days. I'm having to call in sick. I've gone through workers comp. I yeah. check out my x-ray. I cannot tell you how many x-rays I've seen where the person literally looks like they've been broken in half and there's been no trauma apart from the micro traumas that we get from practicing the way that we do and the skeletal changes that occur as a result of that. And so, you know, you, I see the injury and, and we all feel it, right? We get up, we push our shoulders back. We push our hips forward. We're just like, oh, I'm so, I'm so tired. I'm sore. I'm fatigued. And at the end of the day, the thing that we go in to do, we, we want to treat our patients. Well, we're not delivering that same enthusiasm at four o'clock as we did at our eight. Good Lord. No. Yeah. And I say this all the time, like your four o'clock deserves your eight o'clock version of you. Yeah. And what really happens is we're almost resentful that they show up at all. Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> So you are a hygienist though. Uh, and when yeah. did you transition? Are you still seeing patients? Oh yeah. I work full time. Oh my goodness. And so then fun. you go also into these offices and do these like. I do assessments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I speak and I have individual clients that I work with um, oh that gosh. just want the prevention side of it, the workouts and the stretches and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm busy girl. You are, you <laughs> are. So what are some of the common things that people are complaining about? I mean, I think we could all make a guess, but I'm just curious if we're on the same my page. back, my neck, my hips. Those are number one. You know, what right? about wrist hand? Not as shoulder? much anymore. So thankfully I think that, um, one area that our education is, oh, is really okay. helping yeah. is they're pretty much insisting on having ultrasonic scalers or some sort of, um, you know, mechanized scaling systems yeah. in, in the hands of these brand new baby hygienists. And, and it wasn't like that, no, you know, no, no, so thankfully all. that risk factor of all of that, those heavy duty hours of mm -hmm. hardcore scaling are less and less. So the yeah. wrists and the hands don't suffer quite as much, except for I'm, I do see those hygienists that have been practicing for 20 years that didn't have that. Mm. So there's that but the new ones aren't having that. Okay. What the new ones have more than anything is neck problems. Mm -hmm. But that's because the new ones, these these young women that are, and men that are coming out and they're 25 years old, they were born with a cell phone in their hand. And so literally if they're not if their head isn't bent forward in the mouth, it's bent forward into their phone. Yeah. And so I cannot tell you how many 25 year olds I'm getting calling me saying I have to have neck surgery mm -hmm. and I I can't do hygiene anymore. What am I going to do? And or I have pain and I I still have student loan payments to make. What do you mean? <laughs> so, You're so that's, desperate. that's it. It's your back, your neck, your hips. So one of the things that I wish I had known 
back when I was a teenager and dancing, even though I stretched my whole life, like, you know, being a dancer, I'm pretty flexible and I've stretched has been a part of my building blocks to health and stability and strength. But I, when I get my neck pain or my back pain and my shoulder pain, I didn't really think about how that is, um, I want to like the connecting the dots. It's Mm -hmm. not this. that's the problem. It's probably I'm too tight in my chest. My forearms are too tight and all of these are pulling. And that's what's actually hurting me. Whereas I was like going to get massages all the time and concentrating on my back. And, um, even like my knee pain has been tight quadriceps, Mm -hmm. not knee pain. It's because I'm too tight in my quads Mm. and how all of those kind of, um, again, I'm trying to think of like the the biomechanics. Okay. Okay. There we go. It's it's just, you know, it's the biomechanics of, of what we do and how we do it. So if you, if you kind of take it to basics, right. So you have a job that if you don't have proper instruction on how to do it so that you cannot injure yourself, you're sitting in an awkward position all day long. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's bad. So you're in these chronically awful contracted positions and we don't come to the table prepared. We don't show up to work with anything more than our ponytail and our, our scrubs and our right. lips and think, Oh, I'm good. You're not good. You have to stretch before you start doing this kind of thing. It's like an Olympic runner walking up to the starting line and not stretching. You'd never see that, right? We don't do that. So we should be doing that. We should be doing stretches in our morning huddles. Why are we not doing that? It's so simple. One stretch, just do it. And then also postural enhancement. And you know, you, you got to, you're, musculoskeletal system is more than just your bones. Mm-hmm. It's more than your spine. It, the muscles hold the spine together. Yeah. They hold your shoulders back. They hold your hips in place. And if you don't have that musculature, your bones are then dependent on holding your bones up. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really work that way. So you get dysfunction and you have tightness and all these things. And it's like, if you just, if you use a little bit of all of the things, the stretching, the strengthening, the good equipment. That is another topic that is mm-hmm. ginormous, yeah. right? Uh, using good equipment. You need to have loops. You need to have magnification. You need to have illumination. You need to have a, a stool that allows you to say sit a right. Good chair. Yeah. I mean, just basic stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and these things are not, they're not stressed enough. I don't think because we're so focused when we're in hygiene school on just making sure that we can hold that scalar right and make sure we got the right end of the Gracie end of the- <laughs> yeah, I know it. I know it. It's just the basics and ergonomics isn't taught because all you're thinking about is I need to get that calculus off because if I can do that, I am Heidi hygienist. I exactly. Am, I'm amazing. Yep. And you get a high five for the day. <laughs> and you're not and you're not hurting at that point. Yeah. Because in dentistry we don't have we don't have injury that happens with acute problems unless we get a poke. We have an accumulation of cellular death, which eventually ends up in pain and dysfunction. So if you think about it on that level, that inflammatory process that gets started way in the beginning, it is like a cascade effect. And you end up at the end with sometimes irreparable damage. But a lot of the times it can be, I can help so many people reduce their pain just by small little things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big fear is everyone thinks, oh, if I'm going to, you know, invest in my ergonomic future... If I'm going to do something ergonomics, it's going to cost me a lot of money. You're yeah. going to you're going to give me all these recommendations of all these things I need to, to get, do, and and um, practice that are going to cost me money because it's going to take all my time. Yeah, time is money, or I'm going to have to buy a bunch of really expensive equipment. Yeah, and we know if you put dental on something, immediately the price goes up. It's like wedding. Yes, put wedding in front of anything. <laughs> like you know, I'm just having a party, and like twenty percent comes off of it just immediately. <laughs> right? Yeah, I need a wedding cake. Ching. Yeah, all the money. <laughs> I'm like, this is flour and sugar. Like, what? <laughs> right? Oh, the highest Lord. markup in oh, the no. entire world is wedding cakes. <laughs> I'm telling you. Apart from dental and ergonomic, yes. I mean, it's almost like when you walk in the door and it, it, ching, ching, mm-hmm. ching. You know, oh, dental and ergonomic. Oh, let's do this. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be that way. No. And that's really where I try to make that connection because I want us as a profession to not fear it. And to know that you can do this with simple things that save you time, um, which makes you money, you know, and it's a production thing too. Because again, we're business, Mm -hmm. right? Fatigued people don't sell dentistry. So true. When you're tired, you're not going to make that argument as compelling. You're not going to take the time to explain to that patient why they need SRPs. 
when your shoulder's screaming at you, your yeah. hip is screaming at you. Like, yeah, you're just you're tired. They're tired. You're like, whatever. I'm just gonna do another bloody profi. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. I know. <laughs> we already had that at lunch, right? A long conversation. <laughs> yeah, and you just you just don't and. And that's not fair to you. That's not fair to the patient. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. So, you know, I think that if people can learn a few minor technique changes, um, they can get some equipment. I mean, one of the things that I, I like equipment wise, and, and I mean, I'm not sponsored by this uh, company at all, but I, I highly believe in her product is the Cordy's, for uh, example. Girl, it's you're- It's 30 bucks, right? I, so- and okay, Why is this not I would say Cordy's, but the high volume. Yes. The HVE. Mm -hmm. Yes. What? Like, you're right. Why is that not a standard thing? That's not, that should be a part of every, you know, if I have to buy my instruments for hygiene school, I should have like, that, that should, should just be, be part. I have my loops, part of your yeah. kit. It's so yeah. good. And to, I don't, I, I'm like a snob now. I'm like, I'm not, I don't work without it. I'm no, not doing that. No, thank you. I'm good. Yeah. yeah find someone else to break. Yes. It's Cordy's <laughs> is awesome. So, I mean, it's little things. I mean, what is it? 20, 30 bucks. Yeah. It's, it's no not, more than $30. Well, I mean, the high volume might be a little more expensive, but it's got to pivot. Like it's yeah. fancy. So, and you don't have to replace that it. More. It's yeah. non-critical item, So you don't have to put it through the autoclave, but yeah. you can, can. You if you yeah. want to. I mean, if you're that girl, go for it. Yeah. But I, I mean, do it in mine at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, you, you, you don't, you don't have to spend a ton of money. You don't have to go to the gym and be a big buff bodybuilder girl to make it happen. You can do some basic things. And I would say that probably 70 to 80% of my clients aren't coming to me to lose weight. Um, they, they say, you know, if I can lose some weight, do that'd be cool. They're coming to me because they're in pain. Yeah. So and that's the result true. that they get out of it. You know, they feel better and they're more productive at work. You know, when it comes to doctors, same thing. I'm like, okay, where's your benefit? You know what your ROI is on an ergonomic assessment? Do you want a 25% raise? Yeah. Because productive people are people that feel good and aren't fatigued at the end of the day. Right. And I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. If you can be more productive, what, why wouldn't you do that? Exactly. So one of the things that you're saying equipment and one of the things that I wish I had invested in, cause I have loops, I have a light. I love it, love it, love it. But I just recently got a saddle stool. Mm. And I think because I'm only practicing one day a week is why I probably waited so long. If I had gone back five, six years ago when I, well, I left Clint full time like five years ago, but I think I was on the verge of getting one. So I went to crown seating and took their course and like they taught me things. So like what I found was that was fascinating. So this chair that we're sitting in right now, mm -hmm. do you know why it is the length? and height that yeah, is. Yeah, I've, I've been to Crown. Uh, so, okay, yeah. let's tell our listeners that pretty much that was based upon pilots, the British pilots in World War II mm -hmm. because they were crashing planes because in the moment of stress, they weren't able to reach the certain things. So right. then they compacted everything. So everything was within arm's length, but then you had to be a certain- 5'10". Yeah. Yeah, and average height. your average. knee to hip had to be a very specific thing. Your wrist to forearm or elbow had to be a certain thing. And then so now they started making these standardized- Your standard chair. Chair. Yeah. And then us females came up in here and mm -hmm. started, we really screwed up their little design. <laughs> the program. <laughs> because our bodies are different. And when I got that saddle stool, I mean, granted, um, it, you have to get into it slowly because I felt like I was riding a bike all day long. Like yeah. my hips and, you know, inner thighs were like, whoa. But when I sat on that for the first time, I was like, holy crap, I can actually move and work. Yeah. Mind blowing, mind yeah. blowing. Well, and I mean, that that is one of the things. And when it does come to equipment, yeah, there's inexpensive equipment and then there's other equipment. Like, I mean, I hate to say it, but are you really going to go and try and use a $50 pair of loops? No, you're not. Well, I mean, I've seen some other and y'all should not be doing that. Well, you, you shouldn't be doing yeah. it. Yeah. And, you know, and the same thing with, you know, you can get your Amazon saddle stool for mm -hmm. hundred bucks online, yep. Yep. but the reality is a saddle stool is fit to you just like your loops are. Yes. I mean, the first saddle stool I tried was in hygiene school, could not sit on it. Mm -hmm. I was like, why do people even like these things? Yeah, they're awful. Didn't even try it again for years and then went to crown. He's probably got like 35 saddle stools in, the, in his conference room. And I tried every one of them before I could actually, before we found one that fit me. I mean, I'm 
five one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm little. The same stool that's gonna work. It's not going to work for Andrew over yeah, there. Yeah, like, we're not going to use the same stool. Right. So, like, we can't, you can't do that. So, you know, investing in something that you sit on every day that is going to promote good posture, that's going to make it so that you can end your day not exhausted, not in pain, so that you can go home and spend time with your kids and get on the floor and play with them or go to the gym after work and not like want to kill yourself on the way because you're so tired. So tired. You know, and jump into a bottle of wine because, yeah. because <laughs> oh my God, that day. Thanks, Karen. Yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> so I, how much is that worth to you? Yeah, there's expensive stuff, but you you do get, get what you pay for That's at the end true. of the day. So one of the things that I wanted to talk with you about is could we give some simple recommendations, tips, and um uh, maneuvers, maybe uh, that's good for stretching, good for uh, strength training. One of the things that um, I started doing at the advice of my uh, chiropractor. Now, one my journey was um, very similar to one that I do with my patients, and I was I experienced personally motivational interviewing mm -hmm. from my chiropractor because before they were like, you should be stretching. And I was like, yeah, I should be doing a lot of things, but I'm surviving my day. Mm -hmm. And it, the next chiropractor I went to actually said, well, tell me about your day. What does this look like? What is this? And, and, and it was almost like I was like going, oh, you know what? I could do a stretch there. I could do that. So the next time I pay my doctor sitting there talking about like the grandkids and I'm like stressing out because I know I'm running late, I'm going to take a moment and do some yeah. forearm stretches, kind of pull that shoulder to the side, do some, you know, move, and stretching, move my body that, you know, yeah. and, and I felt so much better doing that. Yeah. That's actually something that I incorporate into my course when I teach it. I actually have like a, a 60 second stretch card mm -hmm. and it has, uh, I believe 11 or 12 different stretches on Ooh, it. Okay. And these are all things that you can do chair side in a chair at the head of the patient when the doctor's doing the exam outside of the operatory while you're waiting for doctor, whatever you got to do, <laughs> whatever it looks hallway, like, yeah. you know, give it, give it 30 seconds, you know, give it 60 seconds. That's all you need. Really. Most stretches are a 30 to 60 second thing. And if you can do that, if you can take a minute and, and stretch just a little bit, it's amazing what, what your day will feel like at the end of the day, as far as other like things to do, you know, we talk about strength and strengthening our core is huge. Right. And, and I'm not saying everyone needs to walk around the six pack. I'm saying you need to be strong enough to hold your upper body up. Yeah. And that's got a lot to do with your back, but also your abs because spinal support is completely done with the abs. So at home, you can do things, you know, obviously lots of reverse crunches and, you know, all the stuff, planks and stuff. But what do you, what can you do at work? A little thing that I do is whenever I go to polish, I contract my abs the whole time I'm polishing and I'm focused on breathing while contracting, right? Right. Yeah. It's an easy thing to do. You're already polishing. I mean, we're already multitaskers, right? So you're, you're breathing and you're talking while your abs are contracted, right? And how long does it take to polish? Two minutes, maybe Maybe three. And if you let it go, great. We'll contract it again. And you'll find the longer you do that, the longer you can do that, the stronger your core gets. And that's just a simple, that's just a little tweak, right? Yeah. So it's little things like that, that I, that I teach and I promote on, in my group and my Facebook page and and all that, just little hacks, little hacks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, just something simple like that. Cause if you can develop a little bit of core strength, imagine what your day will look like when you're not tired and you're not injured and feel better. One also, uh, I didn't realize how important stretching the chest. Huge, huge, right? Way Especially huge. Especially for us. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I just did a post like that, uh, about that yesterday morning. I mean, all you have to do is go on the side of your operatory where the wall is and put your arm up on the wall. Make sure that your, um, your biceps are parallel to the ground. You're going to stretch the, your chest muscles because the problem is we sit there and we do the ballerina pose, right? And so your arms are in front of you, your shoulders are internally rotated, and then you hunch over to boot if you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and, and so that the chest muscles get tight. Yeah. So got to stretch them back out, you know? That's not a difficult thing to do. You can do that while you're sitting there waiting for doctor. You can do that while you're six a second. Yeah. I found a lot of my shoulder and back pain actually came because my chest was yeah. too tight. Oh, yeah. Huge. 
But I don't know why that took 37 years for me to figure out, but... Because I wasn't around back then. I know, gosh. <laughs> and you do have a really great Facebook page, and you show a lot of exercises Yeah. to do. Um, one of the ones that I saw you do was because we have, what is it, rotator cuff uh-huh. issues? Is that where oh, we're going? Yeah, against the, uh, away from the ground. So you want the resistance of the weight of the dumbbell or the cable or whatever it is that you're using to go parallel to gravity uh, or wherever it's coming. You want it to be parallel to the muscle you're trying to work. And so what I see a lot of the times is I'll see people in the gym and they're kind of just moving dumbbells around in any given way, just thinking that, that something is occurring there. But, you know, for example, if you're holding, you know, your dumbbells upright, like a goal post, like a goal post. Right. And then you're just doing this. Yeah. You're, and you're bringing your elbows in and then back out again. You're not doing anything. Yeah. Is, would that be more for shoulder? Do anything. Because there's the resi- where's the resistance? The resistance is me just holding my maybe hands on, up. Maybe on your, I feel like so. maybe on your triceps. <laughs> I mean, like it's it, they're not really doing anything, <laughs> you know. But but if you're lying on the ground or you're using a cable machine and you're pulling out and the cable is parallel to or it's it's parallel to the ground and you're pulling outward, that's going to strengthen that rotator cuff. Okay. Similar to the video where I was lying on the ground. And, and pulling away from the ground. Yes. Back in. And that can be a very light, light weight, right? Very lightweight. Yeah. I mean, you can go get a bottle of shampoo out of your bathroom and do it. You don't even need a, a dumbbell. Nice. A pound. Ba- yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> do you um, recommend any kind of like resistant band strength? Yeah. Absolutely. That's so, what I travel with a lot. <laughs> well, and the reason that I, I do that is because just like in, in hygiene, you know, the more modalities that you use, I think the bigger variety of stimulus you can give to your muscles, the better off you are. You get a more dynamic workout. If you stick to a universal for all of your cleanings all of the time, what kind of cleanings are you giving? So, you know, you need to diversify that. Yeah. That's why I tell people to go to the gym because, okay, I'm, I'm a total gym rat, but it's not just because I like the gym. It's because I don't have enough space and equipment in my house to do all of the different things. Get that variety. Do different cardio machines. Do, you know, do resistance bands. Do dumbbells. Do the TRX. You know, I love TRX. There's so many things you can do. And if you've got a, a gym and there's that gym intimidation thing that everybody has, and I have a story about that, a gym just has variety. And that's why I just like get in there. Nobody cares. 95% of the people that are in the gym don't know what they're doing anyway. Yeah. They're just trying to wing it just like you are. Nobody's paying attention to you unless you're like totally flamboyant with your outfit and have green hair. I don't know. So yeah, just that's, that's why I endorse the gym so much. It's not just because I think everybody needs to be a bodybuilder. Yeah. And <laughs> go and lift, like lift weights, put them down, lift weights, put them down. Yeah. Am I correct in saying it's about being strategic with your movement? Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. is there um, like a handful that we need to be like, okay, I have, maybe this is a two-part question. Is it, there are a handful of exercises that we always need to be focusing on. And if there are, is there, or should we be rotating these day to day? So you definitely, again, variety. You want to stimulate your muscles differently. There are some things that, that should always be done for us. For example, rows. In whatever fashion you want to do your rows, I don't care if you want to do bent over rows, seated rows, cable rows, dumbbell rows, whatever. The rows are going to strengthen our mid back, which is what is chronically um, stretched out and is weak. Those, those muscles are weak. So we need to develop those because of the way that our workspace is. Um, so, so that's the first thing yeah, I always say, row, row, row your, your back. Yeah. <laughs> like get your back strong. It's going to hold you up. Right. Um, another thing is glutes. It's not just a pretty muscle. Your glutes are there for posture. It's what helps the the hinge of your body when you stand up is dependent upon your spine, which is dependent upon the strength of your glutes. That's what lifts you out of the chair is your quads and your glutes. You don't have those. You're going to struggle. And then also, you know, of course, for us women, we really need to work on upper body strength because the majority of the people that are going into, um, you know, old, old folks homes, it's, as women, when we, when we get to that point, even if we don't have illness and disease, it's because we don't have the strength to get up off the couch. Yeah. We have osteoporosis because we haven't had any resistance training in our life and our bones are, are very holy. Holy. <laughs> they're holy. They're weak. You know, they're brittle. They're weak because they're, they're not dense from having no resistance. And you cannot get, um, you cannot get bone density without resistance. So, and I'm not saying I'm anti like, you know, aerobics because, 
we, we need cardio. cardiovascular. Yeah, yeah. We need cardiovascular health. Our heart's important, but we also need resistance training so that we can grow our muscles. So for for posture and for healthy living, but also for bone density. Yeah, especially we're living easily into our hundreds, but our bones are, weren't meant to do, to do that. that. And our <laughs> sedentary lifestyle and our shit food and yeah. all yeah. of that, like that, that's really. <laughs> And, and we're all af- afraid of failure, right? That's that's a big deal. Everybody's afraid, you know? And so I was saying I have a story, right? So I only started going to the gym five years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I had all these little at-home workouts, and I had all my magazines, and I literally had cutouts pasted to the back of this door. Oh, my I gosh. just looked like in your average, yeah. like, junior high school <laughs> girl. <laughs> and I had all my stuff at home. And I was like, I can do anything I want to do in the gym at home. I don't need to, I don't need to go there. And I was so afraid that I was going to do it wrong and everybody would know that I didn't want to go. And finally, I got to pretty much the peak of what I could do at home with my bow flex <laughs> and my little baby weights and my resistant bands and everything I could do. And a friend of mine finally said, Katrina, you're going to the gym. I, ah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Get to the gym. I literally sat outside of my car and cried. Oh, my goodness. I was like, I'm not going in there. I'm not going in there. I can't do it. What was the fear? I was afraid Just- people wouldn't, I wouldn't know what I was doing and people would know. Is that, I mean, not to get like all up in your mental health, but is, was that showing up anywhere else in your life that no. you've had to? So I wonder what like was the trigger to develop a thought, you know, like a feeling that turned into a, you know, a thought about that. You know, I think it's because I didn't think you could fake it. And I didn't think that anybody else in the gym didn't know what they were doing. Oh, yeah. So again, it was that gym intimidation thing. It was, they're all going to know because if, obviously, if you're in there, you know what you're doing, right? And the answer is no. God, no. 90, Uh, I mean, the times that I shake my head on the inside, (laughs) throughout the time I'm at the gym, I literally just have to just close my eyes because even the trainers half the time don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's a, there's a solid disconnect between biomechanics and fitness and everybody wants to be an Instagram princess right now. And, oh, look at what I did. So it's, it's really scary when you see people doing things the wrong way as someone who knows. Yeah. And, but nobody wants to be talked to. So you can't, you can't yeah. walk up to somebody and say, can I help you with that? Can I do something different? You know, because we all got our headphones on, we're checked out, it's our Zen time, right? That's a whole different topic on a whole different day. But I will tell you this, the best thing that ever happened to me was when my friend said, I know you're upset. I know you're scared. You're coming with me and literally grabbed my hand, took me into the gym and introduced me to the fitness manager right there. Yeah. And it just so happened that that fitness manager was a bodybuilder, a competitive bodybuilder and was like, nope, you're going to work out. I'm going to show you what to do. And from then I, I mean, I was in love. It was just immediate. And I it's like a little playground once you get into it. And you get past that fear or that worry or also the body pain that comes with working out a little differently. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Then it becomes, I think, a little bit of a gym and you get excited when you see new equipment. Oh, yeah. Stuff like that in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I walk in like I own the place now. I mean, I can't tell you how many. Okay. And this just kind of says a lot about my life is like on a Friday night, girls don't go to the gym. It's. It, it's yeah, date night, I would say right? that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's me and I walk into the gym on a Friday night and it's full of nothing but guys. Yep. And, and I think that they somewhat expect me to kind of like, Oh, I'm going to go be over here. I'm going to go do something. Nope. And you're like all Move up in over. There. I need that bench. Me too, girl. <laughs> me too. But it's good. You know, it's, it's important for people to know that even someone who is a competitive bodybuilder and has a lot of confidence in what I'm doing, I too was terrified at one point. Like I was literally terrified to go in. So go in, ask some questions because that's what they're there for. Good advice. So I am also curious about like the nutrition and other things because I, well, I have two points that I would love to talk about too. Fascia. Do you know, do you talk much about fascia? Yeah. Okay. A little bit. Um, Because that's something that came in to my life about three years ago and then understanding how dehydrated fascia cannot and the fascia is actually so that's your protective uh connective tissue to your muscle but when you have dehydrated fascia like you can't protect the muscle and like it's just yeah well and that's that's just definitely something i stress is is drink your water you know <laughs> i know right <laughs> um you know that's do that's, you need water i i do <laughs> andrew she needs some water would you be a doll oh my gosh thank you you is the best He's like, I didn't sign it's up like, for this really? Crap. Am no. I a fetch and get it boy? <laughs> no, that the water thing is really important. You know, it's not just the fascia that gets dehydrated. It's also your vertebral discs. So 
So spinal, Gross. In- yeah, I mean, that's when spinal injury happens is when it's under awkward and heavy pressure and it's dehydrated because it becomes brittle, right? That's when spinal injuries and fractures happen. And so at least in the dental world, I mean, obviously you get in a car wreck, it's totally different, but in, in our world it's because we've dehydrated ourselves, we've cut off innervation, we've cut off oxygen, we've cut off blood supply. So we, we, we literally dehydrate and then deprive it of everything it needs. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, water's huge. And the OSHA people don't like me very much when I say this, but keep a bottle of water in your operatory in a cupboard with a lid on it. Yeah. Because that's just gross. Um, (laughs) But between every patient, get a glass of water, just get a drink of water. And one ounce or mouthful of water is a whole lot more than what most of us are drinking throughout. For sure. Just, just at least once. And that's not hard to do. No. Now, there's that other thing in dentistry, just real quick. And you, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, I don't have just real quick because now the front office wants me to also schedule my next patient and bill out insurance and follow up with whatever else I need to do administratively. I don't have just real quick to take a, a glass of water and take a drink. But there has to be a shift in priority. You have to decide, okay, this is where I'm at. Like, I will not go grab my next patient until I've taken a drink of water. I will not start my day unless I have eaten breakfast for Pete's sake. You talk about nutrition. (laughs) I don't eat breakfast, Uh, but I do intermittent fasting. Oh, yeah. Well, and then there's that. So I break my fast later in the day. Yeah. I mean, but like you're not going to, you're not going to let your body suffer nutritionally. Right. As a consequence of just real quick. Exactly. Yes. And I think that's, that's so, so, so important. And also like you're talking about fascia, you know, foam rolling. Foam rolling takes you 60 seconds, guys. And it, Once it hurts morning, so good. It does. It like hurts having so a good. massage therapist yeah. right there. I it's say do it in great. the morning, do it when you get home from work. 60 seconds. Again, what does a foam roller cost? $25 on, on Amazon? That's a real nice one. Mine, I think, was $12 from Amazon. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, it's like nothing. It doesn't yeah. cost. Right? These things don't cost a ton of money. No. They really don't. I mean, there are some things that do, but it, it's mindfulness. It's like our, we teach our patients. Yes. They say, oh, I don't, I, I don't floss or my five favorite words, not as much as I should be. Yeah. Uh, how can we tell people they need to floss when we don't take care of ourselves? I agree. I agree. So I think a lot of people will say it hurts like the fascia or the foam roller. If you roll the bend, I'm going to say this because this is the argument I have with my mother all the time. She's like, but it hurts. I'm like, it shouldn't. So that doesn't mean that you stop doing just like our patients that brush and they, and it bleeds and we're like, but you have to brush to get. So how, what's that message that you give to those uh, dental professionals or like, Oh, you know, it hurts to stretch or it hurts to stand up like that, or it hurts to do this. That's, that's kind of where the inner trainer in me kind of comes out and says, suck it up buttercup because you gotta move you, past it. you've accumulated injury as a result of what you've been doing. So if you want to keep what you have, keep doing what you're doing. Now you're going to go through just, and I usually use that example, actually, you know, you, when you first start flossing, you're going to bleed. Yeah. But the more you do it, the less you're going to bleed. Same with this. The more you foam roll, the more you take care of your body. I mean, like I literally have zero pain. I never have any pain, but I do the stuff and it doesn't cost me. Well, I mean, my gym memberships, but but just the stretching and the foam rolling it, and it the tiny happen. little exercise. Yeah. Foam rolling, stretching, strengthening, using good ergonomics, right? I mean, that's another thing. We can go in prepared, just like a, an Olympic runner can strength train, stretch before the race. But if he doesn't do it right, if he tries to hop down the path, he's not going to get there as fast. He's not going to be profic- proficient at what he's trying to do. If we go in and we attack this profi and we just you know, contort ourselves into a, a Cirque du Soleil person to try and clean their teeth. Well, everything that we did is kind of for nothing, right? I yeah. Mean, you have to, you got to move that patient. You got to be an indirect vision person. It's a skill. Hone it, live it, eat it, breathe it, and do it. Good stuff. Any final thoughts that you would like to give? I would love actually some advice for the 20 plus year hygienist, the 10 plus year hygienist and the new grad. So for final thoughts in general, especially, I wouldn't even say especially, just in general, final thoughts, um, there is an extreme benefit to having somebody watch you because you don't know what you don't know. Girl, that's so good. Yeah. Like when you go to the gym, you hire a trainer because A, they know what they're doing. Even if you 
even as a, a bodybuilder, I still have a trainer because they can't, I can't see me doing my movements, right? Just like you can't see you doing your movements. So you don't know if you're doing something wrong. And I think a lot of times, especially as we're more seasoned, our ego gets in the way a little bit. We're like, oh no, I'm fine. I'm not, I'm fine, fine, fine. Don't, I don't need any help. So having somebody come watch you and coach you is really, really a wise investment. So that would be the first thing. The brand new baby grads, I, I mean, I would say ask questions take care of your body now, get the equipment, pony up, you're in, you're already in debt, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> buy the equipment, ask for expertise, get questions, go to answer, courses, go to courses. Because again, what you learn in hygiene school, literally, <laughs> what did we say? Like, it was like, it a, makes it so you don't kill somebody. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, you aren't doing gingivectomies yeah, left and right. That's yeah. what hygiene school is. <laughs> I mean, and, and you're young. So the problem is, and I say you're young because that's probably not a very fair statement to make. You're young in your oh, career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? Oh, yeah. That's you're different. young in your career. And so your body hasn't suffered those accumulative results yet. And so you don't, again, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know how it's going to affect you. So take care of the body. Go to yoga once a week. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. You too. know, get yourself a foam roller. Get on the Ergo Fit Life Facebook group so you can get all kinds of free information. Like, it's all free. I don't charge for my group. I don't charge for my page. They're separate because one's more fitness and nutrition and some people don't want that. And then the other is all just ergonomic stuff. But, you know, get get the information, exercise it, use it, practice indirect vision. That's what they need to do just to start off with and then hone their skills. You know, for, for those of us that are between 10 and 20 years, honestly, I mean, I would I would say the same thing for a 20 plus year hygienist, you know, get your loops checked because if you, as your vision changes, you're, if you didn't have a prescription in your loops, you might need one now, you know, and that's happened with several of my clients, especially the ones that have been in it for 20 plus years. Your declination may be off. If you're experiencing pain and you're doing the stretching, you're doing the strength training, you're doing the, all, you're doing the things and you're still having pain. Again, that's where an assessment comes in. Someone can come out and watch you. Like I, I will do that. I go to offices and I will shadow that hygienist. I can say, okay, well, I can see what's going on. Your saddle is this, your patient chair is that, your loops are this. So getting an assessment, taking care of your body, hydrate. Yeah. Basic stuff. You know, I had um, one of the things that I didn't realize I was doing what I'm doing right now, which is like crossing my legs. And But I was seeing patients like this in a way, yeah. like a crossing. Yeah. And my students are the ones Oh yeah, that called me out on it. And I was like, I did not even realize I had developed that as a positional habit. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's this how we is get a bad hygiene. habit. This is a very bad habit. Yes, hygiene hip. And the other thing I would say to all people is that a lot of ergonomic courses are not for CE, but it does not mean they are not worth yeah. going to. Yeah, mine's not. Yeah. Yeah, mine is a, mine is a two-hour course. It's not CE. It's just for your benefit. Yeah. But find value in that because the courses are not always for CE. Not every state has the same type of CE rec requirements, but that course probably has more value yeah. than, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even want to put any other stuff down, but like, you know, some of the other things, but that's a, that's a good course to go to. Yeah. Well, and I mean, like for my course, it depends on the audience, obviously. I mean, I, I do change and tweak and whatever, if I'm going to an, a dental assistant course for them specifically, or just for dentists, but you know, when I, when I started all of this, I was just focused on hygienists because I'm a hygienist and I know our struggle better than any other. I, right. I, I'm not a dentist. Have I, have I assisted? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I know chair side struggle, but I know our chair side struggle more than anything. Right. So I initially started this just for us. And then the more I started doing it, it was doctors coming to me and assistants coming to me saying, but, but I have pain, you know, and, and really chair side struggle is chair side struggle. As long as you understand what it feels like to battle a lip, a cheek, a tongue, <laughs> and the 70% of our patients that I can't lay back, baloney, and we all know it. So I actually have a, I've changed my message on that a little bit. I think those people who can't lay back have severe airway issues and sleep issues. Uh -huh. And so I am asking if you truly can't lay back, we have a bigger conversation than to have than this appointment. And I'm going to take you back as far as you can, but I'm a little concerned. Yeah. If you can't lay back. And the other thing is a lot of people are like, you sleep like that. I'm like, no, most of them don't. Most sleep apneic patients find a way 
they position themselves so their apnea isn't bad. And that's usually on their sides or up on pillows. And so that is now a trigger for me to have a bigger conversation with my patients. Definitely. Where I used to vent and be like, let the doctor come up in here. They're going to put you right on back. And we all know it. And they do. And they do. It's fine with it. And the patient is fine with it. And I think it's because in their head, it's a little bit of a different experience and a different provider. But now all the sleep courses and the things that these people are having a, they're a fear of going back and they can't describe it because they don't even know that they have sleep issues. Because all those people that can't lay back have no, their mal and four scores. Their tongues are huge. They um, have reverse swallows. Like there is all kinds of other signs. So I am like for a empathetic, a little more empathetic, but I'm also changing my conversation of like, if you have, if this is a real problem for you and you can't go back further, which it makes me not be able to do a, a proper assessment and preventive maintenance on you today, I'm a little concerned by that. Can we have a bigger conversation? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing too, and this is one thing that I, that I do teach in the course is the autopilot button. Oh yeah. And these click. Yeah. And I just said, okay. They, oh, I can't go back. Okay. Well, I'm just going to, we just push the autopilot and then we get back there. Then I'll bring you up. And what happens 90% of the time is that when you do that and you put your autopilot, you know, where you want it, you generally only have to bring them up half an inch. Yeah. Maybe. And they just want the control of being able to say, okay, it's, it's a control a thing. It yeah, is. They're fearful. Mm-hmm. Well, think 100%. about it. They're in a very, they're in a it's very a vulnerable. vulnerable. Yeah. It's yes. very vulnerable. And in, and in their defense, okay, we do a lot of, I don't want to say patient shaming or patient bashing, but when we say turn towards me, turn towards, what does that mean? Turn three inches towards me. Yeah. We need to train our patients. Very specific. You know, and, and there's techniques to doing that too. But I think it's unfair. Um, when you have somebody in the chair and you're not specific with them, they don't know what we need. Well, that's a really great point to make. Yeah. To tell them, just like when we say you can't come to your appointment 15 minutes late, that's very clear to them. If you sit in the chair with them, put them where you want them, or you say, turn way towards me. When you say, you know, put your chin up to the ceiling or whatever your verbiage is, look to the ceiling or whatever, hear about it. If it's not, an, if it's insufficient and they look a quarter of an inch to the left, which is what they do, Say, no, I need you to turn your whole head towards me. I want you to pivot your neck this way or whatever the, whatever you're trying to get them to do, but be clear about it. And that way they, they know where you're coming from, what you yeah. need. And then you'll spend the rest of the appointment when you say, turn towards me. They know what that means now. You know, the other thing I always do is I ask permission to leave, lean them back. I'm like, you. so I'm, it's not like I'm taking, I'm giving them control to give me permission. Yeah. To lean them back. Can I lean back now? Yes. And then if they are like, oh, I don't like to go back all the way. I'm like, oh, let's talk about that. What is that a, a concern for you? Is that like you, you have acid reflux, like what back pain, like let's define the reason yeah. that you can't go back. And a lot of them probably don't even know that they um, don't like to go back like a, an average patient, which I think has um, been a real big learning curve for me too. Yeah. Well, and I think too, Sometimes if we open the door, because I have seen a lot of hygienists that have done that, they open the door. Are you okay with going back? What are you asking them? Don't ask that. <laughs> I'm going to lean you back now. Is that okay? I say, is yeah. that okay with you? Because it take, it gives them the control. Right. Of... But, but are you okay with it? Well, no, of course I'm not okay with it. <laughs> is it okay if I should stick my sharp instrument in your mouth now? I mean, to me, it's, a, it's the equivalent of the same thing. Yeah, you're asking permission, but you're also inviting an already sensitive potentially sensitive subject to hinder. And, and that's, it's already a hard enough battle. Like we don't need to make that harder. <laughs> so, I mean, I think, you know, okay, we're going to get started. Is that okay? And I think that's usually what I do is kind of similar, or, or I'm going to go ahead and lean you back now or whatever it is that I, that I say, um, yes, giving them the opportunity to say, okay, but I, you know, I need this yeah. or whatever, and we can talk about it. But at the end of the day, it's, they're in that chair for 30 to 50 minutes, whatever it is that they're getting actual leaning back time. I'm there eight hours and their comfort is not worth my injury because they're not going to be there to take care of my kids if I get disabled. Yeah. Well, hopefully you're not having an entire day of all those patients. Oh my gosh. I really hope not. I hope not. I, we, we, I don't wish that on anybody. I don't know. Pedo, man. Yeah. I feel for those girls. Yeah. I, every once in a very great while, I'll, I'll temp in a pedo office oh, just gross. to keep me humble. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I saw a lot of geriatric patients for a really long time. And actually a lot of uh, patients that would be in wheelchairs and couldn't be transferred. Oh yeah. And those that's, that takes quite the toll on your body for sure. But indirect vision. Yeah. I mean, that's where it, you really have to master that skill. And I think that somebody needs to come up with, and maybe I'll do it. Um, a, an indirect vision refresher course, because how many of us when we're going to look at the distal buckle of uh, whether you're right or left hand, you know, 15 or, or two or whatever, you're trying to deal with that too, because that's our nemesis. Yeah. Um, you know, we do this, we turn our head, our arm goes up and we're leaning over. Like it's a, it's an ergonomic nightmare of a tooth area. And so incorporating indirect vision, we all know we're supposed to do it. And we use it sometimes, but certainly not to the extent that we should be, or we wouldn't be in pain. There's nowhere in the mouth that you can't get to with a mirror. You know what I mean? Or, or with direct vision. Yeah, I, this is a, uh, we can have this conversation All later. day long. All day long. <laughs> um, but I do want to give everyone your contact information. Where can they find you? How can they ask questions? How can they join these groups? And maybe even come invite you to their uh, seminars or study clubs or whatever yeah. it is. So it's Ergo Fit Life. It's Ergo as an ergonomic fit, as in fitness and life, because ergonomic ergonomics and fitness is my life. <laughs> so ergon- uh, Ergo Fit Life is a Facebook group and also a page. Like I said, the the group is more for fitness stuff. Page is more for ergonomics. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want. I'm also on Instagram at ergofitlife underscore Katrina. I have a website, ergofitlife.com. Perfect. I got an email. (laughs) Again, ergofitlife at gmail.com. So I'm around. I'm on all the social groups. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty consistent. I don't want to get people lost. So That's great. Yeah, and I'm in a lot of the forums. and, And really, like I... Do not at all mind when somebody messages me. Like, if you have a question, ask me. I'm totally happy to help. Whenever, wherever, whoever. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm still working full time. I'm not doing this to get rich off of injured hygienists. You know, I'm doing this because I want to help us. Yeah. So um, it, it feeds my passion. It makes me happy. And I cannot tell you how many times somebody will come to me and say, oh my gosh, I talked to you about this last year and I feel so much better now. And it's like, that feeds my soul. It makes me feel so good because now they've got another 10 years. Good. That's If they want it. If they want it. (laughs) If they want it. You choose though. That's your choice then. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for all this information and everyone reach out and go. I think the Facebook pages are fantastic. So check them out. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was great. Awesome. So I'm sure everybody's like geared up and motivated to like move their body and, you know, strength training. I know she talked about going to the gym, but uh, I did tell you I went to the gym once. And it was like the cleanest yeah, experience, though, you said. It really was the cleanest experience. <laughs> like it was magical. Yeah. Um, I also just flew and that was actually pretty awesome because there was lots of I've never seen anybody wash hands better than I have. Like my airport experience was a positive one, yeah. but I will not be going back to the gym because they have stopped allowing, like they were making appointments. Like hmm. you had to make an appointment. They were spaced out. Um, everybody got their, they had to wipe down things. Everything was like blocked off and that's not happening anymore. And I'm like, nope, hmm. not this girl I'm going back to them home workouts. Thanks. So I know she talked about gym time and weights and all that stuff, but I'm sure we've all gotten very creative in the last few mm-hmm. months with workouts. So um, I did want to quickly read. Uh, um, I love these little messages that we get from our listeners. Um, Tasha sent us in. Tasha or Tasha? I'm not really sure. I, I know people that say it both ways. So I'm sorry if I'm saying it incorrectly. But Tasha, Tasha, whatever it is, she says, hey, guys, love the podcast and how inspired I continue to be because of all of your amazing guests and content. And yes, our guests are amazing. We are always so just blown away by people coming on and giving so much content, so much knowledge for free and just to make us better clinicians. It's amazing. I'm just so grateful that people are taking these deep dives into the very specifics of a part of our profession. Because there's no way that any of us can know all of everything at this level. And so we're just very fortunate that people are taking the time and putting in the work. So true. So true. Well, happy birthday week. Thanks, buddy. Anything else? I'm good. Well, you can wish happy birthday to Andrew on Instagram 
Facebook. You can even send him an email at Andrew at a tale of two hygienists.com. That's with an S he's shaking his head. He ain't happy with me. And if you want to reach out to me, you can do the same at Michelle at a tale of two hygienists.com or head over to our website, a tale of two hygienists with an S dot com. We have a newsletter that goes out every week. We actually just sent one out last week with all of our travel favorites. I like that one. Um, and links. I really enjoyed uh, creating that list uh, with you so that we could tell all the people maybe some of the hacks that we've uh, learned along the way to have uh, just more efficient happier flights and travel, traveling situation. So if you aren't subscribed to our newsletter, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, We just send it out with, you know, fun facts and maybe some episodes that were way back in, you know, the day. And we just like do throwback Thursdays and stuff like that. So subscribe, follow us. And we would love, 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 please, please, please rate and review the podcast. There is a a uh, website in the show notes that you can click. It just takes a few minutes. It makes it so much easier for everybody to find us and also check out all the other podcasts on our network. We have the Dental Podcast Network One. We have Mom Genis. We have the one that I just started with India Chance, which is Level Up Infection Prevention. We have Dentalish. What else am I forgetting? There's just so many now. Yeah. OSAP and ADHA have their own feeds on our... Yeah. So go check out all of those, share them with your friends. We appreciate you for hanging out with us another week and keep your body moving. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Bye, y'all.